me. Um, car hauling takes some work. You don't necessarily be on your phone when you load in for two hours and and unloading. Is, I mean, they don't recommend it because you're on your phone. You could do anything. Not pen a deck. It comes down. You drive off being distracted. So I leave my phone while I'm loading and unloading. And when I'm local and I'm doing two or three loads a day, I don't have as much time to sit around and look on social media. Black goddess in the building. Man, long time no hear from. How, how you been doing? I've been good. I've been good. Over in the car hall inside. Okay, okay. So a, a lot of stuff uh, has happened uh, since the last time we talked. Uh, I think uh, I think we was together, what, uh, about a year ago at least? Two years? I think it was. Yeah, it's been a it's been a it's been a long road for you. <laughs> so yeah, it changed. I don't even remember what company I was at. So what's what's going on with you? Uh, let's let's catch up. So you you're still driving. I am. Okay, so are I you, am. I am. Are you with the old company? And if so, uh, if not, what was the old company? If if you want to mention it. Um, what was the old company? I'm trying to remember which one I was at at the time. It might have been JDM Expedite, and then I left them, and I went to um, Cargo. I was loading auto parts, so that was Expedite. Usually at night, loads are very, very light. Um, didn't really wait long to get loaded or unloaded. It was very, very simple, but it was fast-paced because it's Expedite. I think I stayed there for a year and change, actually. And then I switched to be more local, and I applied to a few different places. And honestly, the last company, More Transport, they just ended up calling me. So people would ask me, like, what, what, what made you go car hauling? Ain't no special story. They just called me first, and they said they are training, and I was like, it'll fit my local schedule that I want. I'm in it. Yeah, so um, when I was at Moore, they did training. It was orientation for three weeks, and then you go with a driver trainer for three weeks. And then they put you in your own truck, and then from there, you know, so on a job, on the road training, um, loading different vehicles, big and small, different locations. You go there, you learn the layout, that they have shuttle drivers to take you to your cars and everything, and the low configurations. So it was a learning curve. Um, and with car hauling, it's totally different. So when you're loading, of course, it's in your hands, and you – determine kind of how long it'll take you to load and unload, but that comes with experience. In the beginning, you're putting them on, but you don't know how close or far you need them. You don't know if you need them forward or backward. And then when you put them all down, you've got to like bring the decks down and pin them so they don't drop any further. You have to make height with everything. So it's a learning curve. And, and sometimes you have to take vehicles off and turn them around and unload everything and put it back until you start learning what works. So it's a little frustrating. It's like a love-hate relationship. But now it's more love because the hate was the time where it took me a little longer. And I wanted to go home where I was getting ready to say, forget this load. And then I had to redo it. And people were helping me beside me. And I'm on the other side of it now. <laughs> For projections, mental telepathy, ESP, clairvoyance, spirit photography, telekinetic movement, full trance mediums, the Loch Ness Monster, and the theory of Atlantis. Uh if there's a steady paycheck in it, I'll believe anything you say. We we talking about J as in John, D as in dog, M yep, as J in as Mary. J as in John, D as in dog, M as in Mary. Yep. And, and they're located out of where? Illinois. Okay, so all right. So would you consider would you consider JDM uh what I call a black ops company? And what I mean by black, um, explain what you mean by black ops. And what yeah. I mean by black ops company, I, it's these companies that are owned by foreigners. Uh, your dispatcher yeah. is across the seas. Uh, they the type yeah. that uh, Chicago land companies. Chicago land companies. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So JDM, you you was rocking out with them since the last time we talked. Uh, yeah. Man, uh, uh, I'm thinking, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I'm thinking things has changed since you since uh, since then. So talk to us. What happened? 
So everything started out good, just like they started any company. They, you know, they're going to be on their best behavior in the beginning. They're going to communicate well. And they used to, like, respond great. Maintenance problems, anything, you know, they, they let you know, pull right in, do this and that. So after a while, like, I was saying I wanted to go further. I wanted to go to California and everything like that. They would only send certain drivers. Um, and then it wasn't giving me places that I wanted to go to or the miles. And then my um, driver trainer or my dispatcher was so new that it was, like, hard to connect the dots and keep me rolling smoothly. Or he'd make some mistakes because he wasn't new. He wasn't experienced in it. Um, so after a while, I just was like, yeah, it's, it's going to be a better fit. The interesting thing is I had got a PM done at one of the shops there. And the next company I went to, they actually saw me at that company. And me being me proactive, I'm asking questions while I'm doing the PM. I'm getting up under there with them. I want to know what's going on with the trucks. Um, and I guess they gave them my phone number because a, a random number called me. And they was like, well, we saw you in the shop, and we're very interested in you. If you want a job, we have a truck, this and that. And, you know, I'm, I'm being loyal. No, I'm with this company. I'm happy. Things are going great. But once it went down, I went straight over to them. Um, but it didn't really end on good terms with JDM. So as they started declining and getting worse and worse, right, I had an accident with them. But nothing happened further with the accident. So let me break it down. I went to St. Louis. I wanted to see the arch and everything like that. Um, I went and turned around to leave, and I hit a fire hydrant. So I did a little police report and everything. No damage to the truck or trailer. They fixed the fire hydrant. So I'm like, okay, well, what do we do now? They was like, well, we're going to keep this amount of money for the insurance deductible, so if the city says anything or whatever the case is, we'll have the money to the side and we can pay our claim. So I'm being proactive myself. I called the city. I'm calling, and now it's like a year, year and a half, and I'm still trying to like, get them on the line. Sometimes they'll let it ring, and then they'll be like, oh, the person you need to talk to was in training or orientation. And I'm like, it's funny how he's always in orientation, can never call me back. I went up there at one point, and he was just getting back, from lunch, but I had to leave and I waited long enough. To, yeah, I remember you, blah, blah, blah. They called me back and they were dodging me. To this day, no claim from the city, nobody has said anything, and they owe me $5,000. So they kept $5,000 for... They kept the $5,000. At this point, for no reason. So for so for hitting the the... The fire hydrant, did it did it explode or anything like that? Like any water come out of it no, or anything like that? it didn't even explode. It just fell over. They just had to put it back. But they were saving the money in case somebody or the city called them to report in and they would have to pay for the damages through their insurance. But it was never reported. Nothing was ever filed. Nobody was held accountable. It had been after two years, no insurance claim. So at this point, I'm like, what is the point of y'all still holding my money, release my money to me? You don't owe anybody but me. There's no other party needing anything but me. So they they don't really answer or anything. Or, and I filed with Illinois um, Labor Department and everything, but it wasn't much that they could do. A lot of drivers filed with uh, with Illinois uh, Labor Department so on, on a lot of black ops companies and come to find out that it isn't nothing that they can do. Uh, I mean, what, what do you think? What, what do you think? Why? Why is that? Um, because I don't know if they have any proof or evidence that they owe you and stuff. And most of these trucking companies don't use escrow the right way or whatever the case is. It's really shady. They can find any reason to still say you owe them money or change phone numbers or they don't have people necessarily here working. However, they duck and dodge on people. But for now, I don't go to no more companies that do escrow. With this company, man, did did they take the five thousand dollars out of your settlement every week, or they just? Yeah, they were taking sum? it out after the accident. So about how much? So all it all totaled up to like five thousand dollars. A little over. So they were taking some per paycheck. I can't remember if I go back. It probably was like two hundred something, or no, I think it was like five hundred something each check or something like that that they were taking. So was you leasing with them, or was you a company driver? I was just a company driver. So this was like ten ninety nine and everything, or was it W two? It was ten ninety nine. Oh man, do you think if you? But was, I'm like, that's crazy. 
Do you think if you was a W two company driver, you think you would have you you would have got your money back? No, I think they would have still dodged just because they don't live here and they've had experience ducking and dodging people or whatever the case is. It's just how it is. Unless you you decide to be on the other side where you really come to their doorstep. If you're not there and you can't really show up and do anything, they just going to avoid your calls and avoid anything or whatever the case is. And I'm just like, at this point, I called everybody I could call. I took pictures. I got the police report. I got everything. Y'all just choosing to ignore me and not sending the money. And I, I haven't took it crazy, you know, to a crazy step, but I just decided to just leave it alone. So you said at first, uh, when you got with the company, it was all good. But later on, you it said was. that uh, that some of the places you wanted to go to, you wasn't being sent from. Where Aren't, aren't you from St. Louis, actually? No, I live in Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, okay. I, well, I knew you was up in one of the Midwest states. <laughs> That's the East Coast. <laughs> That's the East Coast. Yeah, Maryland's on the East Coast. So I wanted to go further just because I saw people going over there. And I'm like, well, why can't I go? And, of course, they had whatever little reason they had. It didn't make no sense. Um, so it just after a while, I was like, it's just too many things. It don't make sense anymore. I'm going to just go to another company. Cause y'all messing me up on loads, and I just was like, I just want to cut left. What What made you uh, interested in the company in the first place? Um, actually, they reached out to me on Instagram. They found me and stuff, and I was like, well, that's very interesting. And based on like my record at the time, um, you know, I was like, I don't think it's gonna work for me. And they were like, no, 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 we'll be able to make it work, whatever the case is. So since they was, I was like, okay, well, I'll go ahead and give it a try. And it seemed good at first, so I rolled with that, but. Once I left them and went to the next company, the next company was good. I stayed for like a year or so. That was the auto parts one. I didn't really have much complaint. You know, I left there and I owed them a little something, but it was some he say, she say stuff with the driver and um, and the trailer. And since I didn't take pictures or videos, um, they couldn't prove if it was me or the other driver. So I just chucked that one up. I wasn't too, too mad about that one. You say JD, JDM reached, reached out to What's you via up? social media. A lot of these, uh, you know, yep. a lot of these black ops companies uh, reach out to us through social media. Um, I, and I always say you got to be careful, you know, on, on these companies, especially the ones that always mention the fact that, you know, we got 80 percent of the load. And 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 like you said, the next thing they say is is escrow, <laughs> you know, like. But yeah. as they explained to me when I asked them about it, I'm like, why, why are you asking the company driver for escrow? And then they turn around and say, well, you know, we, we asked for escrow because, you know, we had many drivers would just up and leave our trucks, you know, abandoned, and we had to pay for it to go and get them. And then I turn around and I would say something to the fact, well, if you think you would treat your drivers a little bit better... I, I don't think they will up and leave the company abruptly. Do you agree with me on that? That's true. I do. That's not the premise that they gave me, although I believe that is a part of it. They said escrow will be for any damages, costs, or whatever, that I would pay a small percentage. That's what the escrow would cover. But in my head, I understand that as, a, I guess, a discipline or a consequence of a driver causing some damage in the company that they would contribute to pay for some of it. But also, that is the risk of the company that they're taking to hire drivers. So if you know that stuff could potentially happen to trailers or anything like that, that's money that you put to the side to prepare yourself risk-wise for anything that may happen with the driver. So you uh, turned the corner and, and, and snatched out a, a fire hydrant. What, what happened right there? Uh, it's just a tight street turning around. It wasn't long enough for a trailer to get through. I turned as wide as I could, but it knocked it over. No water splashed up. Like I said, no trailer damage, no tire damage, no truck damage. Only thing is the fire hydrant fell over. <laughs> that was so, it. So and I was the, like, dang. So when, the, you, uh, of course, you had to, you know, make a report on it and all like that. When Did, did, anybody, <laughs> did anybody come out there to you, uh, police or anything like that? And if so, what, what was the conversation between them about it? Um, so I pulled over afterwards, whatever, and I just got the information from them and I told them what happened and gave them a little, 
I mean, they took the information and I kept moving. I mean, there was nobody else involved. It wasn't nothing crazy. I wasn't nervous. I mean, I just said what it was. So the company and I sent them the police report and it was just, I kept moving. I didn't think it was going to be nothing crazy. So did you get a chance to see the arch? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This happened afterwards, actually. So I had parked and I walked over there, took some pictures. It was cool. So on the way out leaving is when I hit the fire hydrant. Oh, okay. So you 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 actually went down close to it. Okay. How, yeah, how, yeah. how was the experience over there? Is there is there a door? It was cool. Heard, it was tall. I heard, I heard through the grapevine that uh that you can actually go inside. Is is that possible? I think it was, but I didn't go inside. I went over and touched it and took a few pictures, but I don't remember. I know some people walked in there, but it wasn't crowded. It was like the middle of the day, closer to like afternoon early morning um i don't remember if it was a door or not i would have to look that up yeah i i talked to another driver she went out to uh st louis to go and visit the arch and I, if i'm not mistaken i think she said something about going inside and and stuff like that so so yeah so i mean all in all outside of that it was worth it to go and see it was huge and I'll never forget it. And these are the experiences you probably only get in trucking because you don't hit all of these places. You can, but in your personal life, you know what I mean? You you have select places you go to. I wouldn't have St. Louis on my list. Uh, I, I would think, you know, when new people get into trucking, that, that would be something that they should uh, at least experience, especially when they go to different cities like, for example, if they get a chance to go out there and see Mount Rushmore, uh, get out, get get out to uh, Nevada and see the Las Vegas sign, uh, maybe California to walk on the Walk of Fame, uh, Baltimore to see the well, no, not that wasn't Baltimore. That was that. Which one that got the fist, Philly or Baltimore? The fist. Yeah, the fist that's that's in the middle that looks like it's in the middle of the park or something like that. I don't know. I think I, I want to say I don't it's, know that one, but I know Philly has the big silver looking thing. Yeah, I, I want to say it's it's Philadelphia. So yeah, if you you know, we, I, but if, Janine, any calls? No. Any messages? No. Any customers? No, Doctor Venkman. It's a good job, isn't it? Type something, will you? We're paying for this stuff. Everybody's different. Some people don't care about landmarks in some of these cities and getting out and doing something, but that's always been my experience. Get out and enjoy some of the time while I'm out here because it's too normal to just sit in here for a 10-hour break and then you don't do anything in a monotony of the same routine. Just, you know, it's, I didn't want that. I wanted to say whenever I got out, I got out and did things. I mingled. I saw people. I made it an experience. And it was worth my time because I did more than just drive and work. How long? How how long? Uh, how long you put it in now? Uh, this is what twenty twenty three. How how long has it been for you? Mm, like four and a half years now. All right, four and a half. And now you're with uh, now you're with a new company, right? I am. So I left. Um, I left Cargo Max. That was the one with the auto parts. And then I came over to more transport and I was there. That's where I did the orientation and the driver trainer thing. And I went in my own truck and I was only there for maybe three months and change, but that's when the big boom happened. They merged with Jack Cooper and they basically closed down for their company drivers. They let everybody know with not enough time to really spring and do anything. They offered a program where you would lease and buy trucks, um, well, at least trucks that you have truck payments and everything like that, but it didn't look conducive to that. Along with most of the other drivers, I had to go ahead and look for something different. So now I'm over here at Waddle, not by choice, but mostly by force. Wow. So you was so the company that 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 closed down. You you was only mm -hmm. there for a short period of time. Did you did did you expect yep. that to happen that soon? Oh, nobody knew that was going to happen. Nobody knew. It came out with just like gossip, a leak of like the press of like what they intended to do. Um, so then everybody's ears perked up like, what is going on? So, you know, they, they had a little meeting and they kept us at bay 
you know, not giving the full story. And then when they did give the full story, it was less than two weeks for somebody to make a decision, for everybody to make a decision. And that's not enough time for you to make a decision for your family, for yourself, find something at a new company without it being filled up based on your experience and stuff. It just was chaotic. Did you go in a, uh, look for another job mode while you were still out there, or, or did you get a chance to get back home oh, and absolutely. reset? Yeah, so there was, I had a break in between, actually. I just started here this week, so I had a two-week sit before um, the orientation date started. So I had to just kind of sit down and wait. So um, at least, you know, I had checks coming in, so that was a plus, but I can't say that that would have been the same for everybody. Was you, again, was you able to get home and sit for those two weeks, or did you sit in? Oh, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I did. Okay, so you. Because here um, at Moore, I was in a day cab. So now oh, so I'm in a day cab, like, too. I don't have a sleeper. Okay, so this was like local, pretty much. I mean, not local yeah. in a sense, but close enough to get home without being stranded anywhere. Yeah, so in a day cab with car hauling, you stay in a hotel every night. All right, so uh, so, be, so we before we get on up out of here, Black Goddess, everybody, yo, the car hauling, like you, what, 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 you like snack size. So what are you like five foot two? <laughs> I'm like five three and change. Five three. Yeah. So car hauling for you at that size should be a breeze, right? I mean, because like. You know, you 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 you're a little bit limber. You can get in and out of the windows and and stuff like that. Uh, you know, give give us a, a little bit of a, a of a of a day of car hauling with you. Um, it it depends uh, for each person. Since I'm short, I might have to stand up a little taller to tighten the ratchet straps around the tire, like in the middle, because I'm not as tall, but. For the most part, it's okay. I don't really like loading small cars because you got to squeeze out of the window. Then my body's already short, and you got to, you know, push the pedal and get in there without hitting the sides and everything, and then, you know, shut it down and strap yourself. Um, and it's not too bad. Now, I don't have a big belly or anything where I'm really, like, pinching and squeezing and can't get out, but it's still a bit of a challenge. But once you do it, it's, it's simple. It's a process now. It, it might take you a little while to load and then quicker to unload, but... There's advantages and disadvantages of car hauling. I find it worthwhile, but it's not for everybody. But once you're in it, you like it. Would you consider car hauling like uh, like flat bedding? Would you consider that? Consider the fact that you got to strap down and and secure and do all that other stuff. Um, I've never done flat bed, but as a car hauler, I'm gonna be honest with you. We don't really feel like truck drivers. Um, mainly I think because it's just the work and the camaraderie and like uh, more drivers are friendly, more dealerships are friendly. Like people aren't disgruntled. Like you go to warehouses and they're taking forever. Like more people are willing to help you. And then we have, you know, the hotels we like to go to and everything like that. Um, it's just kind of a different breed. And for flatbed, I, I don't want to talk anything bad about flatbed cause I've never done it, but with car hauling, you do everything yourself. There's nobody to put my load on for me. I'm putting the entire load on and taking the entire load off So from beginning to end. So is it one of those uh, trailers that goes over the cab or is it behind the cab? Yes, both. It's before. Well, oh, I know what you mean. Yes, mine is over the cab. How how does it feel to drive something like that with, with a car that low over over the cab? <sighs> It doesn't feel like much to me. I can see why people are nervous because they're scared of heights. But once you connect all of your, your ramps to make a diagonal line, it's just gradually backing up. Um, for me, it's not scary. Um, and you take your time. You watch your deck to make sure you're not too far to the left or right so you don't fall off. But it's not bad. And once you do it so much, it's, it's second nature. So do you guys get do you guys get paid? Per car, per load, uh, cent per mile. How 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 did that work? And uh, second question: uh, What what happened if you get like road, you know, road debris on the car? Are you guys 
uh, responsible for it? And if so, do they take, you know, do they take away from that? Okay, so um, the last company were was since for mile. This company here, since I'm just starting, it, it is percentage. This is the first company I've actually been in that does percentage, so I'd have to wait and see how it is. I'm getting very, very good energy from the company, so I think it's going to be, like, very good. I'm going to get paid well. Um, but you inspect every last card that you take, and you can write up damages on there, you know, if they're small enough, just so the dealership is aware, and it's not on you. It's not your responsibility. But if you miss something and they find it, that will be on you. So every company is different. You may not get a performance bonus per month because you have damages. Um, but as long as you catch everything and you document it, you should be okay. Road debris, for the most part, they won't blame that on you because you've looked over and documented kind of everything that you saw and it's there. So anything after that will be extra that you didn't account for. How how's the tra how how's the trailer uh the car the car trailer I'm I'm assuming this is as in riding yeah how how's the riding on it oh I'll say at the last company I feel like maybe it was just that trailer or maintenance wise um when you hit a pothole it would like wiggle you would feel the vibration as you're sitting down it was a little annoying but in this truck here I don't know if it's because it's better maintained I don't really feel anything. And I mean, I've only had it since yesterday, but I would have known immediately driving through the city or smaller towns if I would have felt something. But I don't really feel it like I felt it before. So that could be a maintenance thing and upkeep. So car hauling, uh, I, I see a lot of them, especially out of Florida. I, I see a lot of car haulers uh, coming out of Florida. You being from uh, Maryland. Uh, would you, is, is there a lot of, you know, cars that's coming up that way? And, and what are, and what are your routes? Like, do you go down to Florida or would you go down to Florida? So at this company, I would, and I want to. So at this company, they do have a lane going to Florida. Um, you know, they have a couple of different terminals and everything like that. So eventually I do want to take a load going down to Florida and then they'll, you know, route me to the closest terminal and bring me back up. So for me, it's going to be local slash regional, but that's just something that I've decided. Um, so one week I'm doing local, you know, for my child to be there and everything like that. So I'm just doing Philly, Maryland, Virginia. And then that other week, I'll run damn near anywhere, you know, because you get more miles when you run over the road. That's anything trucking. Anytime you're over the road, you get more money for the most part. And then a local is less bad. So I plan to run, you know, Georgia, Florida, Kentucky, Ohio, kind of wherever black goddess yes yeah. sir thank you uh, you yeah. mentioned you mentioned uh you mentioned your kid how old is your kid now she's 11 so she just started middle school oh okay okay how, how do your kid now that she's yeah. now that she's 11 years old uh how, how does she feel having a mother for a truck driver um she wants to get back in a truck she wants to go over the road and everything. And, you know, for the most part, we do all truck drivers. Summertime is the time. My kids are out of school. But you can't have riders in most of these car hauling companies. So we would just have to do regular vacations outside of the truck. Uh, but um, now that I've switched over, this is me personally. I have prioritized more of my sanity, my social life, putting family and friends first. So I, do, I don't ever want to go back to completely OTR. It's just what's important to me now. Facts, facts. Oh, so that's where I'm at. Yeah. So truck. <laughs> so you know, you 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 kind of kind of backed off of the trucking life to have a more of a work mm -hmm. balance, right? Absolutely. Yes. All right. So I guess my last question yeah. is going to be, man, <laughs> like you know. You you was heavy on social media. You kind of you know you kind of ghosted social media for a little bit. Uh, I mean, car, um, car hauling takes some work. You don't necessarily be on your phone when you load in for two hours and and unloading is. I mean, they don't recommend it because you on your phone you could do anything. Not pin a deck. It comes down. You drive off being distracted. So I leave my phone while I'm loading and unloading. And when I'm local and I'm doing two or three loads a day. I don't have as much time to sit around and look on social media. So in my downtime, I can, but it's just not ideal. But I will say, 
<laughs> I started my truck and fitness line, so it's going to be geared towards health and fitness. I am creating um, shirts and equipment to reinforce fitness and staying healthy and putting health as your priority because you are the most important freight regardless of what company that you go to. So I want that to make my initiative and my motive for people to, you know, put that at the forefront. And me have done, like, doing sleeper and everything before. I know what it takes and what it means to sacrifice to work out in the truck, outside of the truck, pull up to uh, gyms and cook in the truck and outside the truck and just for your sanity. So it's not new to me. I'll just incorporate it while I'm doing car hauling, make it a business, and help change other people's lives at the same time. Message. <laughs> Great promotion right there. You can always do it here on the there you go. <laughs> Recruiter Call channel. Thank you very much, uh, Black Goddess, for your time. No I really do appreciate it. I I love to catch up, man. I love to see what you guys uh, have been into, you know, since the last time we talked. I know y'all are super busy and everything and i and i do appreciate i do appreciate you women out here doing your thing man thank you it's even few women over here in car hauling so where i thought it was like that in driving it's even less they appreciate you more over here they were like it take a lot of guts over here to do this and i'm like i'm just doing what works for me i ain't trying to be no better than no man or nothing i'm just doing my job that's all i can do <laughs> How how do you keep your sanity in the uh in the fuel island, man? Because you know when you step out that truck and everything, all eyes is on you. So how 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 do you keep the uh how, how do you keep the the the, the guys at bay? <laughs> I just keep it moving. I I really do. I speak. I'm nice. I'm cordial, but I don't never take it too long. I mean, crazy enough, I don't see at the truck stops as much as I used to. I pop in. I pop out, but I don't, I don't sleep there. I pull up to hotels and I have access to different food. So I'm never like parking hotel too long. I might park a lot to pick up these cars. But that's it. <laughs> that's it. Big cheese got it locked. Boy. What you want me on?